just been fucking busting ass on school shit all day. I can't believe that Zoom call went for as long as it did. Yeah, I was pretty surprised. I'm setting this here is like an ash thing. Oh, for sure. All right, well, I think it's probably good right here. Whoa, well, welcome to the Weasley update. I'm Aiden Weiss. I'm chilling in a fucking hot box, and I'm ready to fucking ramble. It is episode 13. Woo! Whoop, whoop. Here with the D-Man. Yet again, we fucking... Dude, we did it. One full season. You know, we that's just a uh, just an example of what hard work will do, man. I've seen you grind tonight. I'm sure a lot of us have. You know, you've been putting the work in. So shit's starting to come to fruition a little bit with you. Thanks, dude. Well, uh, I've got a bowl loaded for you right here. Oh fuck yeah! Did I pocket the lighter? Got a fucking. This is. Oh, here it is. The toker poker is supposed to make it easier, and it just doesn't. It, once you have it, though, once it's located, oh, yeah. it makes it easier. Dude, I can't go back to regular lighters now. I, I gotta have a toker poker. About to put this toker poker to the, to the use yeah, right let's, now. Let's see this shit. If you don't know what a toker poker is and you smoke weed, you should seriously fucking look at one. It's like a little sleeve you put your lighter in. It's got a thing at the bottom to ash your fucking bowls and, like, pack them and, like... A little metal, sort of like thin twig Whoa, to fuck. clean your shit. It's awesome. <laughs> well, probably eight bucks. <coughs> yeah, not much. Holy fucking shit. I, I'd say it's, it definitely can't be more than ten. Oh, man. When Dude, you're nickied up, that, that bowl hits different. True. True. I haven't been nickied up in a... Long good, time. I good think for you, the, the last time I did Nick. No. <coughs> I think the last time I did Nicky was that Zen I took when we were watching Return of the Jedi. Nicotine is for phonies. <laughs> you know, I use it. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I it hooked me, and I get there's an addiction, but you only ever... It, phonies started. You know what I mean? It can, get, it can hook up anybody, but... That's... I guess that is something I've always sort of wondered about. Like, our friends that use nicotine, I guess, is like, how did it start? For me, it started with a jewel. Yeah, dude, I, I don't want to sound like the fucking old mom who doesn't know what's going on, but I definitely feel like vaping and that shit mm -hmm. has sort of made, uh, made it more accessible for people to get addicted to nicotine because i think there's a stigma with smoking cigarettes that there isn't with vaping oh yeah and that's not it, it shouldn't <coughs> be like that but that's yeah. just the way it is but for me it, it started off innocently hitting other people's jewels and then you start to crave it and so you purchase your own vessel and from there i mean once you once you purchase it it's already done like at that point you it's already got you um, if you feel like you need it bad enough that you need to purchase one cause it's not, you know, not just like a every once in a while type of thing at that point, you know yeah. what I mean? You start to crave yeah. it and I'm not going to name any names, but there's a gentleman, uh, with a sorn that works at Frankie's with us, our boy. And, uh, I see him ripping on that thing and I, I want to join in on the fun. And then before you know it in a delivery, you're like, I cannot wait to get back to hit that. And then it's like, I started, if I saw his car there driving by i'd stop in and go grab a rip yeah and then i'm at my house and i'm like fuck i want this so i'll hit him up and be like yo dude can i drop you a few bucks and rip the sorn and then it gets to a point where i don't want to be a pest and i yeah. buy my own fucking thing and then it's got you at that point yeah you know i think that on top of my lungs just not being able to do nikki <coughs> i think that is honestly part of what deterred me from getting into the sorn because I mean, you remember how it was at the pad. Yeah, just we being all a lived pest. together. Like, everyone was like, hey, can I get that? But the gentleman you know? we're speaking of couldn't be more generous. Yeah. And, uh, and kind. So yeah. You, you know what I mean? I'm sure sometimes it has gotten annoying, but I think for the core boys, we've hooked him up before. Yeah. With a lot of things, you know what I mean? Not to say that he's like a like a charity case, like we give him shit, but yeah. it gets a give and take. Like he, no, you're absolutely same with weed. So, exactly. So that's I, how it goes, and I don't even think about it with weed. No, no, you know what I mean, and and so I think that uh, I think we were almost in the clear in a way. Yeah, it's just like the, that idea though of because even though even if you aren't really being a pest, you definitely still feel like. Yep, it. and that's still 
even if you feel like it, it's it's like even if you're not in reality, that feeling is still there. Yeah, exactly. That like so self that, guilt or whatever. I, I think that's worked against my chances. Of well, well as you know, I'm trying to get off, and I there's two things that I think everyone should stay away from as far as they can: nicotine and gambling. Those mm-hmm. two things. And I've seen the other side of both. There's high highs. But there's moments where you just feel very unproud of yourself. And that's not worth it. You know what I mean? So I've gotten off the gambling one because there's no casinos open. Actually, to be honest, I haven't gotten off the gambling because once the casinos close, I just moved to the stock market. Yeah, but that's different. It's, it is different. And Absolutely. Different. It's different um, because it's, it's an investment rather than a gamble. But it is still well, a gamble. For starters, but also gambling is sort of a game too when you go to a casino. <coughs> so there's an entertainment value. And you're not in control. Yeah. You're not in control. There's an algorithm behind it. At least with the stock market, it's you're gonna die or live on your own sword. Yeah, seriously. Which is nicer. But you know, it's still my fix. Like I'm not gonna like pretend it's not like it's smarter, I think, but it's still like got me that fix. Interesting. You know what I mean? Like, uh, triggered the same tri- response. Exactly. Wow. It really did. Yeah, I've never I've never been to the Ninos. Stay away, Weiss. Yeah, I don't... They're fun. I don't have any it, fucking desire to go. If you're gonna go, do it in Las Vegas. Do it on a trip where the boys are just doing it. Don't go to See, your fucking I, local I, casino. I just don't think I'd go on a trip like that. Like, if the boys were to huck it down to... Vegas again, like it'd be one thing if it was like Vegas was a stop on a big trip, but if all the boys, and I really mean this, if all the boys were hucking it to Vegas on a trip, I would pass. I wouldn't, but I can see where you're coming from. It's a money hole. Well, it's, but it's you got also in- just like there's there's at that point, I know like one, it's the money, but also just like the time. You know what I mean, like. You're, you're really, when you, whenever you take a trip, for me, I, even if there isn't one, I try to find a way to make myself feel like I earned it. Yeah. So that you feel good about, like, <clears throat> taking that time off and whatever and be like, you know, this is downtime for me. I'm going to really enjoy it. But if I'm not going to the casinos, you know what I mean? Then I'm just hanging out in the hotel while everyone else is fucking gone so like it wouldn't really be downtime and then it can't be worth the time let alone the you know what i see the lens you're looking at but i I really do think there's a middle ground and it's called drinking because you can go to the casino not gamble they got bars there you just drink and you watch all your friends lose their harder money so you get and if you're sitting right next to me i'm like we should should i throw in here and you're like do it you get a little bit of that but like you know that thrill without any of the consequences. That does change it a little bit, because I sort of thought if you weren't gambling, you'd get kicked out. As long as you're with somebody that is, I think you're fine. I, I don't know. I've never been in a casino and not gambled, but I'm. if you're with somebody or accompanying someone gambling, you know... Yeah, I, I still don't know, though. You don't think I, it'd be I fun think to that. sit next to me? I think it'd be fun, but I don't like... You know, there's a lot... Then it depends on, like, if it's, like, a week-long vacation of just that, then, yeah, fuck that. It wouldn't be just that, though. It, it's just, you know, going to the strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't like fucking hitting the titty bar, right? Well, well, that's the thing, though. That's where I'm actually with you. But you just go because if your friends are spending money in there, you can get away with not spending money. And you get some of the thrill of it without any other consequence. But that's the thing is like, I don't like going to the titty bar, not just because I'm spending money. It's weird. You don't like seeing titties? It's weird, dude. Every time, in theory, Mm -hmm. it sounds cool. Like when someone's like, yo, we we hit the strip club and everyone's like, woo! Like, it sounds (laughs) awesome, but every time I've showed up, there's been this like heart sinking moment where I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. This is just some weird. Because. What, I when I go, I can't take it very seriously because no. it's so awkward. I've got to sort of take it. I, this might sound bad, but like a little bit of a joke, like not in any disrespectful yeah. way. No, you got to like to get into women. you got to get into but, a mindset. Yeah, but like w- no one else there besides us does that. So it'd be easy. It'd be one thing if it was like a bunch of other people in that mindset, but instead there's some real 
like old dudes just like really into it in other ways and it's weird the music's always fucking weird i just and half the girls i'm not shaming here like i'm an i don't shame at all i I love girls of all types i really respect that yeah profession yeah i i respect that profession but half the girls i don't want to give me attention and those are the half that tend to give me the most attention well it's just like it's weird to me the fucking maybe weirdest part is when you're getting a laugh dance it's just sort of like i don't like the uh contractual sort of feeling about it like when i'm fucking you know like doing that shit it's usually because i've spit some game or something you know what i mean like so it's it's and there's like a mutual attraction going on so it's weird to have a chick be all intimate like that with you when you like when you know it's because you're paying her that's that, how i feel about yeah it. you know i'd like to dispute all that i can't though because it's all true because like i do there is a a, a fog that rolls in of just pure shame like 30 seconds into your interaction with this girl. Yeah. You know, it's just like, wow, you know what? I'm, I'm it makes me feel douchey. Especially when, like you said, when they first, like, take your hand and start talking to you. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is just some regular girl. Like, it, it sort of makes me feel like she's judging me a little bit. Oh, in her heart, she's probably thinking, like, you know, she'd never actually get with you. Yeah. It's and that, like, that's This, this guy is thing. a fucking... I, he's just, I'm so just I'm just, him. like, really off-put by that weird juxtaposition of, like, a chick being physically intimate with you, but she's actually, you know, very yeah, distasteful. Yeah, you know, but that's almost sort of the bar, the same thing with the casino, is you just gotta be up front with them and, and just sort of be like, look, uh, I'm not interested in a dance and they'll leave you alone, because then you're wasting her time, she could yeah. be making money elsewhere, gonna go let her do her thing. But it's kind of the same thing with uh, the casino is, like, you can watch your friends put themselves in these predicaments. And, of course, I'm not going to name names, especially in, in these stores. But the funniest thing is always watching one of the boys have to get escorted to the ATM by the stripper. Because you know they went a little too long or, like, they agreed to something which they didn't mean to. But, like, some of my most funny memories are seeing individuals just at the ATM is with so their head funny. down. You know what I mean? The stripper right behind them. Like, that's that's fucking funny. That alone is worth going because it's going to happen to at least one of the boys, especially in Vegas. That is that is pretty funny. You know, um, there was one time we were there and uh, this chick came up. And I didn't have any money, so I wasn't <laughs> going to do anything. But this chick came up to me and she was like, Hey, you know, like start started doing her thing, and uh-huh. I was like, I, I don't have any money, s- sorry, you know, like thank you. Yeah. And she sort of just took off, and then a buddy of ours, fucking bought me a dance. It was just like, yo, I got you. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, okay. Yeah. So then I went and got some other chick, and I wouldn't have picked that first chick in the first place, yeah. to, if I'm gonna be honest. But then it was weird. We like when this girl was taking me back to the seats, we passed the first chick. Well, I will say there is a direct correlation between a stripper's level of their perceived attractiveness and the effort that they give. Yeah. The hotter the stripper, basically a hot stripper is just a lazy stripper. Because she's just getting dances based on, you know, she looks good. The ones that really go for it are the ones that, like, every dance is their chance to make an impression. You know what I mean? Where they're, they're waiting for that opportunity uh, and I've had both. I, I, I've had uh, some ones that I would consider to be nice, and then some that I almost, I got kind of bullied, pressured into it, just felt <laughs> bad, kind of, and I just accepted. Um, and I would say 100% of the time, the more skilled dancer, not necessarily the one I enjoyed the most, but the more skilled dancer was ones that would not be hot. Oh, man, you out of here? Yeah, I'm out of here. We didn't even say that during the en- entrance. Well... I didn't think it was necessary. Yeah. Well, fucking thanks for hopping on, dude. Yeah, no problem, dude. I'm thanks for the bullshit. Have a safe drive, of course, bro. I'll do my best. You fucking hold it down in here, buddy. Stay safe. I will. Peace out, All dude. Right. Peace out, homie. God damn, and I love that guy. Wish he could be there the whole time, but he's got some shit to do. And I do not want to uh, put out uh, any hype, but... All I'm saying is this guy has been cooking up some shit, 
and I am extraordinarily pumped to see where he goes with it. Woo, by the way, you should fucking follow his account, Dear NBA underscore Bring Back the Sonics. It's a uh, it's an account dedicated to bringing back the Seattle Sonics, which were taken from us, as I've talked about multiple times on this podcast. Damn, I've I've had a loaded bowl sitting here in my lap for a fucking minute. What a pain in the ass, because I wanted to fucking take my second bowl while he was in there, while he was in the car, that is, so there wasn't a, uh, a dead silence while I'm ripping this fucking bowl. Well, can I pause it? Can I do that on my phone? I don't think I can. Don't know if it'd be worth doing anyways. God damn, I haven't hotboxed my car in so long in this. It's fucking killing my throat, man. Oh my god. I thought this one glass of water was going to be enough. What the fuck was I thinking? You know what else? I can't fucking believe we're getting the Snyder Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, Zack Snyder's Justice League is being released on HBO Max in 2021. How in the fuck did you crazy sons of bitches pull that shit off? That's insane. I Every time I think about it, I honestly can't believe it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Just a little backstory, if you don't know. Basically, there's a huge movement behind Zack Snyder. He's a director. His version of Justice League being released. Because the Joss Whedon movie, which was released in 27, I believe, was a fucking dumpster fire. I mean, it shit the bed so hard. And there was a bunch of shit that, like, plagued the production, particularly because Batman v Superman is an ass movie, which was the movie preceding Justice League. And so, uh, Warner Brothers went through and made a bunch of changes, you know, top-down decisions about the movie is never fucking good for any creative project I've learned from the outside. Um, and, uh, they changed a bunch of shit, and Zack Snyder was fired, and, uh, Joss Whedon was hired. He directed The Avengers, and the movie was just so fucking terrible, and since it came out in 2017, um, there has been a movement called Hashtag Release the Snyder Cut, and these crazy sons of bitches have been fucking buying billboards, flying planes around with signs, I mean... Excuse me. It's fucking insane that that they pulled this off. After two years, HBO Max, which is Warner Brothers' new streaming service, announced that they are doing it in 2021. It's coming out. Zack Snyder is currently reassembling his post-production crew. And they are spending another 20 to $30 million in... Uh, expenses to finish the the film whether it be cgi and shit like that so it's crazy i mean not even just like as a fan of um comic shit but i like that is a crazy move on warner brothers part Zack snyder had some quote about it being unprecedented and incredibly bold of warner brothers and they are he, I mean, he is so right, dude. Because I, I don't think Marvel and Disney would do that shit. If, like, some movie was an absolute dumpster fire and the fans for two years demanded for as much as these people have demanded that, like, the fucking whatever cut gets released, I don't, I don't think Disney or Marvel would ever do it. And Warner Brothers is fucking pulling it off, dude. So, And we'll see how it is. We will see how it is, but the the craziest thing to me is there. I th- I thought if it was ever going to be done, it would sort of be a little unpolished in places, um, because I didn't think Warner Brothers would invest any money. But they're investing twenty to thirty million dollars. So that's crazy. It's going to be four hours long. Looks like it's going to be split into six six episodes or something, and I'm really pumped. I am really pumped. I'm going to subscribe to HBO Max just for that. 
Um, and I'm going to watch it, and hopefully they'll release the air cut of Suicide Squad 2, which also, because Batman v Superman was an ass movie, faced top-down decisions from the studio. It, um, it, it, that plot originally heavily tied in to Justice League, but once Warner Brothers was deciding all that shit was going to change, they went went back and reshot a bunch of Suicide Squad, and it is what it is. And Suicide Squad is at least entertaining and feels like a cohesive movie, whereas Justice League is just like... (sighs) What kind of studio turns in that performance? You limp dick son of... Sons of bitches just should have never put that movie out in the first place. It sucks. It fucking sucks. You know what I will say about Batman v Superman, though? I've said this probably a hundred times this season already, but the warehouse fight with Batman is just unmatched. Maybe one of the best fucking hand-to-hand combat sequences in film, in my opinion. Oh, God. So, like I said, I can't fucking believe that shit's coming out, but I'm really pumped. This is going to be the first time ever we'll get two Batmans in one year. Ben Affleck's Batman and Zack Snyder's Justice League and Robert Pattinson in Matt Reeves's The Batman. So I'm pumped. And what's crazy is like a week before this all happened, I was bullshitting with Derek about it. And uh, and I was like, yeah, dude, it's crazy. Like, you know, just telling him all the all the little details. And I said something about like, I wish as much as excited as I am for Robert Pattinson's Batman. I wish Ben Affleck's Batman movie was still being made. Then this shit gets announced. Now there's rumors that AT&T, who owns Warner Brothers, AT&T and Warner Brothers want Ben Affleck back. After Zack Snyder screened them the his cut of Justice League, they want Ben Affleck back. And those rumors are adding up to other rumors, you know, take this all with a grain of salt, saying that if the Snyder cut is successful, his vision will continue to unfold on HBO Max. Separate from the film universe. Very interesting. Really interesting. I That might be dope as fuck, dude. I definitely have to... Fuck. I mean, it depends on how much it is. But if if that were to happen, if they were... To release the Snyder Cut, then release the Ayer Cut of Suicide Squad, and then, like, continue with that universe as an HBO Max thing, I think I would subscribe. If it's reasonably priced. I just, wow. Good good for him. Good for him. He lost a daughter during the production of that movie, too, so... It's pretty sad. God damn it, that movie fucking sucked. Maybe it wasn't all that. I haven't seen it in a little bit, but... No, it it is that bad. It is that bad. I just tried to wipe it from my memory because there's so many... Batman fucking blushing at Superman. What are we watching? You fucking... Oh, you bastards. I can't believe you put out that trash movie. Who the fuck watched that and was like, yeah, this is acceptable to go to theaters? This will just slide with fans, let alone the fucking general audience. Wow. It might have actually... No, it didn't make any money, actually. That was also a reason I thought it wasn't going to get made. Because not only did I think they wouldn't spend more money on it, but it had already lost money. So, man, I wonder what that means for Jason Momoa's Aquaman. I wonder if that I wonder if Amber Heard's getting fired from that fucking franchise for making up a bunch of shit about Johnny Depp. That chick's gonna go to prison. She's facing up to three years in prison. Can you believe that? If you don't know this this story, basically Johnny Depp got me too'd by his wife named Amber Heard and what we know now is that she went to him with allegations of abuse and or that, you know, allegedly went to him with allegations of, or, god damn it, I'm so stoned. She allegedly went to him with a list of demands and said that if he didn't meet them, she was going to go to the press. And so all that shit happened. She went to the press. He lost a bunch of franchises. And, uh, 
And then a bunch of audio tapes came out and a bunch of other shit where it turns out she's the, the, the abuser. Punched him in the face, cutting the tip of his fucking finger off, shitting on his bed. I mean, the list goes on. The verbal abuse in some of these fucking audio tapes is horrendous. I mean, if it was coming out of his mouth, I'd fu- Oh my God. She's, yeah, that chick is crazy. And if she gets convicted for uh, forging those police documents, she's going to jail for up to three years. I mean, wow, that's insane. But she hasn't been fired yet from the Aquaman franchise. I'm just saying, if that was a fucking dude, definitely would have been fucking fired. But no one cares about my opinion despite the fact that I have put 13 episodes of it on the internet. Dude, I can't believe I'm in the last week of the quarter, either. Holy shit. I've been busting ass all day, and I still have a lot of shit I want to do tonight. I haven't actually sat down and, like, worked on this creative writing project at all today. I did work on the soundtrack pretty hard. As soon as I'm fucking done with this podcast I'm listening to a piece I made for that today because I'm so pumped about it and I also worked on some concept art pretty hard for it as well but I have not actually sat down and written it just because I was working on an essay and a big a final presentation getting through we are getting through god that freaks me out about next quarter and shit I'm gonna have to Email my advisors and stuff. Corona has just made... Thrown everything through a loop. Okay, God, I want to draw more right now. I'm so baked. Do you ever just get those sudden urges to draw? The iPad has made that incredible. You'd think I'm sponsored the way I talk about this thing. I bought the big iPad Pro, like the 12.9 or whatever the fuck it is. And this thing is in the Apple Pencil, and I downloaded Adobe Fresco. And the, some of the concept art I've been busting out is amazing, and it's not even, like, it doesn't have anything to, to do with my artistic ability. This thing just makes it incredibly easy. It feels like I'm cheating. Some of the shit, there's literally brushes in this app that look like authentic hair and shit. And, like, of course I'm going to use them for concept art because the idea that just because I wouldn't use these brushes um, because I didn't draw, like, every tiny little hair follicle is ridiculous to me because I I hear the argument, but it's like that brush is going to look better every time than what I could do. And so, and at at the end of the day, the concept art is, is about conveying the best visual representation of what I'm trying to to put in people's heads and and so the best way to do that I think is by you know subscribing to using those fucking brushes and maybe it's like a moral dilemma I've just made up in my head it's it's not like I've talked to anyone about that but man some of the shit I've been cooking up on that thing it's just so easy just coloring shit. The ability to color shit. I never color on pencil drawings. Because every drawing I've ever colored has turned into absolute ass. Absolute ass. I remember so specifically there's one I think of. Because it was seriously tragic to me. I whipped up. It was like a competition with a girlfriend at the time. A drawing competition. And I whipped up this insanely dope picture of... Charlie Cox's Daredevil and it was like his neck and shoulders like sort of bled down the page and and formed the indents and like cities you know city streets and stuff it was such a fucking cool drawing and then I colored it in with colored pencil and I know this sounds dramatic but I've absolutely ruined it like I'm oh it still hurts me the iPad's just crazy. Just let's say you do use a colored pencil. Okay, I'm gonna make this black. Well, that's all I can do now. Now I can't put any detailing on over it. Like on this app, I can make some little square black, and then let's say I want to add a little 
fucking gray stitching. Boom, boom, boom. It's it's as easy as that. You know, we got a play of driving by. I don't recognize that car. What are you doing on my street, huh? Well, if they fucking stick around, they're about to get gassed out, because I'm taking this bull at one point or another. Oh, they're whipping back around. I'm going to straight up have to gas these fools out. <laughs> I'm not actually going to do that. I think my parents would be really embarrassed. Just sitting outside their house, fucking competitively ripping bulls at neighbors driving by. This is sort of strange, though. No one comes up my street, and this dude's just slowly driving by. Ah, oh, shit, is it my neighbor? <laughs> no, it's not. I am really stoned, though. Oh my god, it is my neighbor. I'm such a jackass. Heard it here first, folks. Aiden Weiss is a fucking jackass. Speaking of jackass, they're making another one of those movies. Johnny Knoxville, fucking all of them. Can you believe that shit? Oh my god, I hope they don't kill themselves. Because those dudes, in a lot of ways, define my childhood. I wonder if I could record a Snapchat video while I'm doing this. Sorry, I should not be replying to people right now. But I'm still doing it because I'm a fucking asshole. Okay. Let's see if I can... God damn it. Taking a picture. I am at least going to take a picture from my Snapchat memories. Season finale, baby. Feels really good. Alright. Taking that down... Will it let me? All right, we're trying it. Bum, 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 bum. Holy shit, it did. <clears throat> I don't know how the audio turned down on that one. I have no idea, but I'm not going to be able to play a song while I smoke this bowl. That's a big problem for me. Every time I smoke a bowl, there's a song I listen to. No, that... I guess I didn't do it on that podcast with Derek, because I ripped a bowl there. It's just incredibly rare, and I honestly don't like doing it. I feel like bong rips are meant to be taken to music. So maybe I'll just save this bowl until I go inside. I think that... <clears throat> That might be the play. Shit, dude. Already going on 33 minutes. I have been rambling so hard. And my throat is still kicking my ass. Oh, God. I loaded a fatty, too. Or, you know what? I'm just going to smoke this fucking bowl as a sign-off to season one. Motherfucking Weasley update. All right, let's see if this this works. All right, Snapchat. We're gonna set this shit up. All right, everybody. Whew. This is Aiden Weiss signing off of the Weasley update season one. God damn it. Ended that Snapchat video. Fuck. <coughs> wow. Well. I'm gonna say... <coughs> oh, fuck. Bull well deserved. Let's clear this shit. 
Oh. Oh. <coughs> I have the lighter. So I have the grind ski. Do I have the little Ziploc bag? Nope. Fucking A. Oh. No. Oh. That bowl kicked my ass. <coughs> Holy fuck. Okay. God, I got this fucking cup too. Lighter. Grinder. Cup drawing. Alright. Peace out, everybody. I'll see you next season.